Well, this was a real setting, and it was during Halloween where they ran across uh, some practicing Satanists, and they were they were sacrificing a black cat. And uh, so once again, they believe that if black cats are, you know, if they are in fact reincarnated human beings, they're being sacrificed to gain the life force or the power from these beings. Did you know that uh, animal shelters will not adopt out black cats at least two weeks prior to the Halloween season? There's a reason for that. They know what happened to them. Philippians 4 and 8 tells Christians, he says, Finally, my brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is good and worthy of praise, think on these things. So the Word of God instructs us as Christians to concentrate and to, to think on pure and heavenly things. But what is so pure and heavenly about witches, about fortune telling, about skeletons and demons, about disfiguring, uh, disfiguring property and playing malicious tricks on your neighbor for the sake of a laugh. I know, we used to push the outhouses over when we were growing up, get somebody caught in there, and we'd shoot the taillights out of cars when they went across bridges. And for the sake of tradition. But tradition says we only do it for fun. But guess what? God says don't do it at all. Mark 7 and 7 once again says you hold fast to the traditions of men while laying aside the commandments of God. So a lot of people, it's more your tradition is more important to you than, than what God says. Somebody asked, well, well exactly what is this hell house then that your church in the house of prayer promotes each Halloween season? It's a good question. Let's go back once again to the scripture that we began with here in Ephesians 5.11 where the Apostle Paul writes, For you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light, for the fruit of the light consists of goodness and righteousness and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord and have nothing to do with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. All right? So how does a person <clears throat> expose the works of darkness? By simply turning the light on. You expose darkness with truth. Okay? The Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. Praise God. Now, and Jesus tells us to occupy until I come. Now that word occupy doesn't mean just to take up space. Okay? It means to go forth. It means to take back what Satan has been stealing from us all along. That's what it means. So we can't just sit idly by while the devil goes about as a roaring lion devouring souls. People said, well, isn't Hell House just another haunted house or another Halloween gimmick? Well, let's look at three truths about what Hell House represents. Number one, What's the content of Hell House? What's, what's Hell House really all about? Hell House is a reality check, first of all. Hell House doesn't contribute to darkness, but rather it exposes the works of darkness and reveals who, this is it, reveals who the author of death and destruction really is. Amen. Once again, 1 John 3 and 8. It says, for this purpose the Son of God was made manifest that He might destroy the works of the devil. We can't destroy the devil, but we can expose and destroy the works of the devil. We can expose and destroy the unfruitful works of darkness. Praise God. You know, through the, through the different scenes that Hell House has employed, I was explaining to our... Uh, people Saturday morning, yesterday morning, that there's not a scene that that in all of Hell House that someone or some or someone in someone's family ha has not been or is it currently being affected by something that's going on in that scene. So they're very pertinent, you know. 
uh, scenes that need to be exposed and how the devil is the author of these things. So we looked at the content. And number two, what's the fruit? What's the proof of the pudding, so to speak? You know, Jesus came to set the captives free. Let me ask you this this morning. How many haunted houses do you know of that's ever had anybody to give their life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ? You know anybody that's gotten saved going through a haunted house? No. Amen. But through the presentation of Hell House, of course this is all over the United States, but just here over the past nine years, from 1999 to 2008, we've seen over 690 people give their heart and life to Jesus Christ. The first time salvations, and that's the ones that we know of, the ones that, that took the time and they were they filled out the comment card and they, they thank God, you know, that, that we were here to open up reality to them. Amen. We've seen 1,871 rededication. Rededications to Christ. People that, that have been pulled off the fence. Amen. They've gotten on one side or the other, you know. And so this is the fruit of what Hell House is about. And number three, I believe Hell House challenges us that, you know, you may say that Halloween is harmless fun, but I believe what people fail to grasp is the big picture. The big picture of what this is all about. That is, you know, by participating in Halloween as Christians, you are actually promoting Satan's plan of deception. Because if you look at it, the whole Halloween thing itself is a mask that Satan hides behind just to get us to believe that it's all just fantasy. It's a mask. When in fact it's very real and lives are being destroyed because of it. You know, it's a shame that in this country we've got in Church of Satan, people that, that admittedly say that I worship Satan. You know, back during the 80s, we had a lot of black metal and thrash metal and speed metal and like Slayer and Wasp and different ones that that said that they were Satanists. And, and I know that uh, uh, Bob Larson traveled with the group Slayer for a couple of years just to see if they were actually Satanists. And, and uh, he said that they were not. But we know that their music promoted Satanism, and he asked them, you know, there's so many, there's so many young lives that are being destroyed because of your music. You know, would you, you know, would you recant and say, you know, we're not Satanists. This, this is all just, you know, we're just doing this for the music, say, say. And, and they said they would not because they're making too much money from it. So our kids are being sold out for money. Lives are being destroyed for money. And we just see that going on and on and on. So, praise God. You know, if we say that we're Christians, then we ought to live like it. Amen? Even during the Halloween season. So I believe we ought to go out and rescue some people this week. Amen? Father, we want to thank you this morning, Lord God, that once again that you remind us, Lord God, which is of more importance, which is of more priority, Lord God, your word, your commandments, or tradition, Father. Lord, and I, I pray, Lord, and I know this was a hard word for, for maybe uh, many in here this morning, but Lord, I, I thank you, Lord God, that, that you're patient with us, and that you speak to our hearts, and Lord, it's, it's another... It's another level, Lord God, that we can draw closer to you, Lord. And Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for giving us the strength and the courage to stand up in the, in the middle of a, of a traditionalized world today and say, you know what, I'm following Jesus. I'm following Jesus and I don't care who knows it. And I'm proud of it. I'm thankful for the changes that he's made in my life. And yes, I care about my kids. I care about how they grow up. And Lord, I do want to train them up in the ways of the Lord. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for that hedge of protection that you have around us through the shed blood of Jesus. Lord God, that hedge of protection, Lord God, that Lord God protects us 
from the fiery darts, Lord God, that, that protects us.